Hi, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. In today's video, we will be reviewing a section in the 2019 Star Math Test Prep Workbook for 7th graders. The section is Numerical Expressions, Rational Numbers, Probability, and Predictions. This is part one. To follow along, you can purchase a 7th grade Star Math Test Prep Workbook. The link will be in the description box below. Remember, 7th graders, if you can dream it, you can do it. Let's get started. Question number one says, which diagram best represents the relationship among integers, rational numbers, and whole numbers? So look, let's look at our answer choices. For A, we see there's a large circle. It says rational numbers in it, and then there are two smaller circles one says integers and the other says whole numbers. Let's take a look at B. There's again a large circle, whole numbers is its title, and then there are two smaller circles again, but this time one is labeled integers, the other rational numbers. C, we have actually three circles and they're interconnected together. The largest circle is labeled whole numbers, the circle within that is rational numbers, and the last circle is labeled integers. Let's look at D. Kind of similar to C, the large circle is labeled rational numbers though. Then there's another circle inside of that, that's integers, and the smallest circle is labeled whole numbers. Our first question we are going to ask ourselves is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the diagram that best represents the relationship between integers, rational numbers, and whole numbers. What information can help us find the answer? This diagram is used to identify differences and similarities between two or more sets. Now, if the sets have similarities, they will overlap. The outer circles show that there isn't a relationship. So let's look at, for instance, choice number A. We see a large circle, so we're saying that both rational numbers, I'm, I'm sorry, both integers and whole numbers are rational numbers, but that integers and whole numbers have differences. They have no similarities because they do not overlap. They do not connect, okay? Kind of the same thing with choice B as well. Let's look at C and D because they are different. We see one large circle, we're, and we're looking at C. We have whole numbers, so we're saying that um, integers, let's start with a smaller circle and move out. We're saying that integers are rational numbers and rational numbers are whole numbers. Do you see the connection? So they're all similar, they're within each other. That's the difference between what we talked about in A and also answer choice C. That is the information we need in order to help us find the answer. How do we solve the problem? Well, in order for us to solve the problem, we need to know or understand rational numbers. And we have a Venn diagram on the right-hand side that shows us those relationships. If you see the overarching square, square circle, it's just a shape, right? The rational numbers come first, but then within that, we're saying integers are rational numbers. And then we have another circle within integers. We're saying whole numbers are integers. And then lastly, we say, we're say we saying that nat natural numbers are whole numbers. So we're saying that these have interrelationships together. Let's take a look at our Venn diagram and also let's look at our answer choices to see what is our correct answer. What do you think is the correct answer? Let's go back again 
and analyze the information and also our answer choices because we want to make sure that we choose right. And also what you can do is you can find out which answer choices we know aren't part of the equation. I'm sorry, are not part, um, not able to be a right answer. Okay, what is our correct answer? What do you say? If you said D, you are correct because based on our diagram, we said that rational numbers is the overarching, um, is the overarching category. Then we have integers, and then within the integers, there are whole numbers. So again, the correct answer is D. If you got that answer correct, high five, good job. If not, it's okay. Just go back and analyze the information again. Let's move on to question number two. Jack tossed a coin three times. Which tree diagram shows all the possible outcomes of the coin landing heads up or tails up? Our first question is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the tree diagram that shows all the possible outcomes of the coin landing heads up or tails up. What information can help us find the answer? Well, to help us find the answer, I think we need to understand what a tree diagram is. It's the probability with the tree diagram, probability a branch is created for each possible outcome. So remember our possible outcome, um, outcomes are heads and tails. Then we have connecting in branches that show the possible outcomes from that branch, okay? So what we're saying is first, we have our outcomes, we know it's heads or tails, and then from that outcome, we have in branches, hence it be called, being called a tree diagram. How do we solve the problem? Okay, since we have heads or tails as our possible outcomes, they are our beginning branches. Then there needs to be connecting branches for all the possible heads or tails, okay? And, what, and, and the way that you can kind of figure it out is, think about when you're playing heads or tails, okay? So the first time you flip it, it can be heads up or tails up, okay? Then after that, you're gonna flip again but then again, it can be heads up or tails up, and that's how it continues on. Based on that information and looking at the answer choices, what do you believe is our correct answer? If you said H, you are absolutely correct. Now let's take a look at why F, G, and H aren't correct answers, just so that we understand, because it's great that we have the correct answer, but sometimes it's also good to look at why the other choices aren't, um, are wrong, so that when you are taking your test, you can, again, figure out, are there any answer choices I can cross out? And also, what would be the best possible answer? Let's look at F. Well, the reason we did not choose F, if you notice, both of the beginning branches are heads, but what do we say our possible outcomes are? We said heads or tail, heads up or tails up, not heads up or heads up, so that is why F is incorrect. Let's look at G. Well, for G, it only has tails, but we said again, our possible outcome is either heads up or tails up, and J is the same thing. Basically, it only has heads up. We know that's wrong, so our correct answer is H. Let's move to question number three. A classroom is arranged with eight seats in the front row, 
10 seats in the middle row and 12 seats in the back row. The teacher randomly assigns seats to students as they enter the classroom. What is the probability that the first student who enters the classroom will be assigned a seat in the front row? A, two-fifths, B, or I'll say two out of three. C, four out of 11, D, four out of 15. Of course, our most essential question to ask, what are we looking for? We are looking for the probability that the first student who enters the classroom will be assigned a seat in the front row. What information can help us find the answer? Okay. In order for us to solve this problem, and excuse me, I have a cold. <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, we need to have the probability formula. A probability formula, in formula, the numerator says the number of favorable outcomes and the not denominator is the number of possible outcomes. Okay, so we said that in the front row, these are the favorable income outcomes. We are looking for the probability that the first student that enters that door, they will be assigned a front row seat. We know that there are eight seats in the front row. That's our number of favorable outcomes. Now, for our number of possible outcomes, what we need to do is add all of the numbers together. 8 plus 10 plus 12 is equal to 30. So our number of possible outcomes is 30 total seats. How do we solve the problem? Okay, so we're going to set up our formula again. We've already said that eight seats in the front row is our numerator, which is the top number. That's the number of favorable outcomes. And our denominator, the bottom number of our fraction, that's the number of possible outcomes or the total number of seats, right? So our fraction is, or our ratio is, 8 over 30. Okay, so do we stop there? We do not because remember, when it comes to fractions, even though it may not say it, what you need to do is simplify or reduce the fraction to the lowest term, okay? Because 8 and 30 have a number in common or a greatest common factor. What is that greatest common factor? Two, since both of them are even numbers, and that's a little tip, if you have both even numbers, you already know that two is at least um, a factor that you can reduce the fraction, okay? So what we do is we are going to divide the numerator and the denominator by two. Eight divided by two is four. 30 divided by 2 is 15. Now, we're going to look at 4 over 15. Can we reduce this? Can you think of a number that can go into both 4 and 15 evenly? Me either. So, what is our correct answer? Since we know that 4 out of 15 or 4 over 15 is our simplest fraction what is our correct answer looking at the answer choices? If you said D, you are absolutely correct. And that is it for part one, <coughs> excuse me, part one of our seventh grade STAR 2019 math test prep workbook, okay? The section is numerical expressions. Do you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or surrounding areas? If so, we will be having 20 uh, Star Math Test Prep Boot Camps 
on Saturday, February 2nd from 1.30 to 4.30 p.m., March 30th, 1.30 to 4.30 p.m., April 20th, 1.30 to 4.30 p.m., and also Sunday, April 28th, 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. at the Conference Suites in Arlington, 411 West Road to Six Flags Street, Arlington, Texas. I also wanted to give you a friendly reminder about the Star Math Workbook and also to tell you when the seventh grade Star Math test is. It is scheduled for Monday, May 13th, 2019. This has been Shay Jackson with Hype Math. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you can get all of the updated Star Test Prep and SAT Math Test Prep videos. Have a great day.